Today I'll read chapter 4 from the book, The Lady of the Lotus Born. The, the, uh, the Life and Enlightenment of Yeshi Sogyal, the first wife of Guru Rinpoche, Padma Sambhava, the Lotus Born. Chapter 4, Teaching and Instruction. It was first in Chimpu Gegong and in Yamalung that through the true and the certain precepts of the Four Noble Truths, the Master urged that Lady Sogyal, through the practice of virtue, he explained to her the Sutras, the Vinaya, and the Abhidharma, which are the teachings on the level of the relative truth. He instructed her in the infallible principle of, the, of karma, the law of cause and fruit, teaching her the behavior that she should embrace and the acts, actions that she should forsake. And he placed her in the endowed state of purity and virtue. She received and took to heart all the doctrines of the first six vehicles of Dharma. She was able to stabilize her meditation, grasping the full meaning of all that was explained. She attained a perfect understanding. Goddess Sarasvati appeared to her unsummoned, and she obtained the city of unfailing memory. She beheld the entire world with the eye of flesh, acquiring both ordinary and transcendent clairvoyance, and gained the power of displaying incompatible, miraculous appearances. I shall not enumerate all the teachings that Lady Sogyal received for fear of the length of such a list, but in brief, as she herself said, all the teachings of the Buddha were present in the precious Master Padma Sambhava. He was like a vessel filled to overflowing, and after I had served him long in the three rays pleasing to a teacher, all that he possessed gave to me. The woman Yeshe Sogyal, he poured it out as from one vase to another. My mind is at ease in Dharma. I understood the differences between the nine vehicles, and was able to distinguish true doctrine from the false, knowing the secret of the karmic law of cause and fruit. I conceived the desire for that truly unsurpassable teaching that totally transcends karma, and so I begged the precious Guru, Guru Kim, uh, in the land of Odiyana, you were born and reigned supreme in India among the sages. In Tibet, the regent of the conqueror, of Buddha, O Buddha in human form whom I revere, though young I had experienced much, I was a girl at twelve when sorrows burst upon me. My parents paid no heed and gave me as a bride. Such are the customs of this world. My heart was not inclined to worldly ways. I fled for safety to the gorge of Anfu Taksang. A suitor's lustful yearning sought me out, and chained and helpless I was dragged away to grief. Lord and Guru, great is your compassion. The great religious king was my deliverance. I came to Samye, chosen as his queen. To you he offered me, his bride of sixteen years, as basis for the third initiation. I see the secret now of karmic cause and fruit. Bestow on me, I pray, the lofty teaching that transcends this law. His face radiant with smiles, Guru Rinpoche answered me with this melodious song. Well said, mistress, maid of hardship, you are a girl of only sixteen years, and yet have seen the long-drawn sufferings of a woman of fourscore. It was your karma, know this well. What remains of it has now been purified, and henceforth only happiness will be your lot. Rebirth in evil comic forms is now impossible. You see the secret of the law of cause and fruit, and earnestly desire the supreme doctrine of the Mahayana. That is excellent indeed. With these words of the Master, I crossed the threshold of the teachings of the secret mantra, assuming the root and branch samayas, and the Master said, Kyama, listen, mistress, maid of Harchin, Queen Samantha Bajri, heed me well. The root of Mahayana secret mantra is samaya. Should you let it rot, the earth beneath will crumble to our ruin. So be faithful to your vow. I first received the four sections of the Samaya. These are the root Samayas of body, speech, and of mind, and their twenty-five branches. The fundamental Samaya, however, is that of the Bodhicitta, wherein the relative is sealed by the Absolute. From the very beginning, the body is the deity, speech is the spontaneous sound of mantra, and the mind is nothing but suchness, the Dharmata. Emptiness. The Samaya of the body has three aspects, that of the master, that of the disciples, and that of the methods of keeping the Samaya. The category of teacher has in turn six aspects. The teacher in general, the teacher is guide, 
the teacher as giver of Samaya, the teacher as repairer of Samaya, the teacher as liberator of one's mind stream, and the teacher transmitting the essential instructions. Likewise, there are four categories of spiritual kinship, general, distant, close, and that of sharing the same mandala. The means to preserve the Samaya of body is as follows. Outwardly, the teacher and our spiritual brothers and sisters should be for us like our Lord, our father, mother, and close family. Inwardly, we treat them like our eyes, our heart, our life itself. Secretly, we behave towards them in thought, word, and deed, without deceit or guile, as if they were our Yidam, deities. In short, with our body, we make prostrations both to the teacher and to our spiritual sisters and brothers, and we circumambulate them. We prepare their seats and honor them as though we were their man, maid servants. We offer them everything that pleases them, our food, wealth, body, enjoyments. Most especially the same respects we have for the teacher we show to his wife, sons, daughters, brothers, his father and mother, his sisters and so on, even his servants. This is how the sacred Samaya is preserved. In the same way, we give up any sense of disdain towards the disciples, monks and benefactors, who obey the teacher's instructions and are his servants. In short, just as we respect the teacher, we honor all who are dear to him, as well as his servants, horse and watchdog. Indeed, without the permission of our teacher and our spiritual brothers and sisters, we would not use or even cover a single sesame seed of their provisions. Wealth or belongings, it is said in the scriptures that to step over, tread, or sit on the teacher's hat, clothes, shoes, cushion, bed, seat, even his shadow, is the same as destroying a stupa or statue of the Buddha. What need is there to say that we should refrain in the presence of the teacher from striking or killing, theft or robbery? The scriptures say that we should not even joke about such things. It is quite certain that to repeat to others any faults that the teacher may have, to ascribe to him faults that he does not have and respond instantly to his rebukes will cause us to be reborn in the hell of torment. Unsurpassed will there be no reprieve until though we worship the Buddhas of a thousand million universes. I did not, uh, speaking for myself, I did not transgress even for an instant, or in the tiniest degree, the Samaya Abadi, with regard to my teacher, or my spiritual kindred, I did not deceive them. I harbored no grudge against them. I never humiliated them. I had no wrongs about them. I never wished them harm or slighted them. The Samayas of speech related to the Yidam deity have two aspects, the manner in which they are classified and the means whereby they are kept. As regards classification, there are three types of mantra and four types of mudra. In the case of the mantras, there is the root mantra of an erring cause, the circumstantial mantra of the generation stage, and the action mantra of the resuscitation. As for the mudras, there is the samaya mudra related to the mind, the karma mudra related to the primordial wisdom, and the dharma mudra and the maha mudra. In order to preserve the speech Samaya, body, speech, and mind, one must be, must be at one with the mandalas of the Guru, Deity, and Dakini. And this is done according to the three modes of practice, excellent, moderate, and basic. In these three ways, I myself practice the 700,000 mandalas of the unsurpassable secret mantras introduced to me by the teacher. In the manner of one possessed of superior faculties, I never relinquish the Samadhi of great bliss, free from thoughts. The excellent level. I forsook neither the samadhi that views the phenomenal existence of male and female deities, the moderate level, nor the samadhi that is unerupted like a flowing river, the basic level. At the excellent level of a superior, I practice the mandalas of Hayagriva and Vajra Varahi, continually like a running stream. At the moderate level of a superior, I observe the Samaya practicing Vajrakila in six sessions uninterruptedly, three by day and three by night. On the basic level of a superior, I celebrated once a day the entire cycle of Saddhas of the eight great Herukas, complete with the resuscitation of the appropriate mantras in the Gana Chakra, feast offerings, and so forth. I practice without counting the cost. 
In the same way with regard to the other deities, I never neglected any of the mandalas to which I had been introduced, never thinking for an instant that the mere introduction was sufficient. As for those performed on the excellent level, I undertook their approach and accomplished stages regularly every month, as well as offerings on auspicious days. Regarding the practices carried out on the moderate level, I performed their rituals once every new and full moon, on the eighth and tenth days of the month, and so on. As for what was practiced on the basic level, I never failed to perform the rituals once a month, and even on the fundamental level of practice, I perform the rituals once a year. The Samaya of the mind concerns the view of meditation and action. Again, it may be considered from the point of view of classification. This means that when the profound view is experienced in meditation, the outer, inner, and secret practices of union and liberation are implemented. Similarly, as a means to preserve the Samaya, there are four classes of secret, four general secrets, four intermediary secrets, appropriate secrets, and entrusted secrets. The four general secrets are the names of the Yadam deity, the mantra, the mantra of activity, and the signs of accomplishment. <laughs> The four intermediary secrets of the places and times of practice, assistance in the practice, and ritual substances. The appropriate secrets of the offering materials such as the inner and secret oblations, Amrita, Torma, and so on, as well as implements such as Kampala, Furba, Khartanga, Vajra, Bel, and Mala, and all the elements and supports the practice of the unsurpassable secret mantra. These are, for example, material mandalas, the eight garments of the Chanogram, bone ornaments, and the rest especially the skull drum, the skull cap, and the thigh bone trumpet. The four entrusted secrets include the private activities of our spiritual brothers and sisters, such as their secret practice, as well as the evil behavior of ordinary men and women. In brief, we do not speak to others about any actions that would be befitting to reveal, whether concerning our guru, our vajra country, or anyone else. These, then, are the Samayas of body, speech, and mind. Together with the ten secrets, the Samayas of body, connected with the teacher and the four categories of disciples, Samayas of speech, referring to the three types of mantra, and the four mudras, finally the four outer secrets, the four inner secrets, the appropriate and the entrusted secrets. All these I received from the teacher, and I kept them purely without letting them spoil for a fraction of a second, even down to the teeniest imaginable particle. The precious teacher also took me the 25 branch Samayas. First, the Samayas of the five actions to be performed, union, liberation, stealing, lying, and harsh speech. Then the five Samayas of substances to be eagerly accepted, excrement, bodhicitta, flesh, blood, urine. The five Samayas of objects to be meditated upon, the five Buddha families, the five wisdoms, the five Buddhas, their five consorts, and the five bodies. Then the five Samayas of emotions, not to be rejected, desire, hatred, stupidity, pride, and envy. Finally, the five Samayas of knowledge objects, the five aggregates, the five elements, the five sense powers, the five sense objects, and five colors. As for the details Samayas explained in other texts, I received those also. Not even for a single second did I fail to uphold the sight of Samaya. Therefore, the master of Orgyan held me continuously in his compassion. I entered the mandala of the unsurpassable secret. The door of the secret mandala is empowerment, and of empowerment samayas are the root. This is why I have explained them. And uh, that is the end of part one of the chapter four teaching and instruction of Guru Rinpoche to Yeshi Sogyal, his first wife. Padmasambhava Guru Rinpoche had six wives, became great Dakinis, yet in reality, uh, especially in this world, the continents of rose apples, from India, China, Tibet, Gen, Zhang, Li, and Hor, he took no less than 70,000 maidens, all endued with perfect qualities. Yet in reality, he was never separate from the five emanations of Vajra Varahi, the body emanation. Mandarava, the speech emanation, Yeshi Sogyal, the mind emanation, Shakyademi, Shakyadema, the qualities emanation, Kala City, the activity emanation, Joshi Chidran. Finally, there was the Dakini pra Pradadara, 
the emanation of the suchness aspect who made us makes a sixth wife. Now of these Indian now of these Indian Mandarava and Tibetan Yeshi Sogyal were supreme. The life of Mandarava, the second wife, the speech emanation is told elsewhere. Here in brief is the tale of Yeshi Sogyal, who is the mind emanation. She who is the mother of Buddhas Past, present, and future, the Kavner, Marakaya, every renowned as Yeshi Sogyal, accumulated merit, purified defilements from numbered and unnumbered ages, sending forth great waves of goodness for all that lives. In the days of noble Sajra Prarudita, when born the daughter of a tradesman, she met with Buddha Dharmodgata, in the company of five hundred maidens, resolved steadfastly never more to be born in samsara. And later, when she life continued out of this prologue of life, she wandered far and wide through many Sambhogakaya Buddha fields, and at length, when the Buddha Shakyamuni was present here on earth, she took birth as a woman known as Ganga Devi, and made a collection of his teachings. Afterwards, she lingered again in Sambhogakaya Buddha fields, being known as Sarasvati, and there dwelt both the weal and benefit of many. Now, at that time, the Buddhist king Trisan Detsen, a man who was a manifestation of the noble Manjushri, wisdom and insight, wished to bring the sacred doctrine to our country of Tibet. He therefore called upon the mighty teacher Padmasambhava, free from birth and life continuation, who was none other than the Buddha Amitabha in the pure land of Western Paradise, appearing in this human world. The king indeed invited him and built Samye, the glorious, the delight of his heart. He established also innumerable temples near and far, and thereby caused the teachings of the sacred Dharma to rise and shine like the sun. It was then that the great master Padmasambhava took counsel with himself, that I may propagate the teachings of the sacred mantra, he pondered. The time has come for an incarnation of the goddess Sarasvati to appear, and in that very instant, like the moon casting its reflection on the sea, he was far away in the emanated land of Orgen. Rumours arose as to his whereabouts. It was said by the Tibetan ministers that the Guru had been punished and exiled to the wild marches of Thokka. The pious king, for his part, declared that he was residing in the three Mayan fortresses of Mon, engaged in spiritual practice. As for the common folk, they were gossiping that he had made off to India with the queen. But the truth was that the Guru was ranging to the hundreds of Nirmanakaya Buddha fields, remaining there. For seven years in human reckoning, he summoned to him the Vajra Yogini Goddess Sarasvati, wrathful frowning Tara, the Dakinis of the four classes, and those of the sacred lands and places elsewhere, and elsewhere. All without exception, he took his pleasure with each and every one and roused them with this song of joy. Cree! In the secret sky of great desire, desireless, as through the rays and beams of deep, deep compassion, passionless, of the blissful Vajra of desire beyond desire. The time is now at hand to play the great bliss deep and secret. Then Sarasvati rose up in the midst of the assembled deities and made this answer. Ho! Haruka! Hero! Lord of bliss! Great dancer that you are! Dancer if you can! This sacred lotus holds the greatest of great bliss. For in this secret space there is no grief or pain, and time is now at hand to go down to a wild and savage land. Samaya ho! cried the Lord. Samayastvam, cried the lady. Samayahi, he cried, and she Samayatishta. Rahoham, he cried, and she Ragayame. With these words, the Vajra of the Lord and the Lotus of the Lady were joined, and thus they remained in meditation. Lochana and the other four female Buddhas made offerings and praise. The Lord Herukas banished forces of obstruction. The Bodhisattvas made prayers for good fortune. The great sentiments. Sentinels held back hindrances, and the four female keepers of the gates raised the circle of protection. The Vajra goddesses danced, while the protectors of the ten directions, the Mamos and the Dharmapalas, pledged themselves to guard the doctrine. At that moment, the great bliss of the Lord and Lady caused all the worlds to tremble and shake, and in that very instant, from the point of their union, a clear light burst forth. A red letter, eh, encircled by a garland, White vowels and a white letter of one, circled by garlands of red consonants, which dropped, dropped like a shooting star, down to the land of Tibet, down to the dark 
to the valley of the Drak Drasu. Samaya Gya Gya Gya. Chapter 2 The Birth. During the period of the earliest dynasty from the first king Nyat Nyatri Senpo down to Namri Songsen, Tibet was divided in the seven fiefdoms. But when the great religion, religious king Songsen Gampo succeeded to the throne, he took the whole of Tibet in as his dominion, as did his successors after him. Measureless were the fruits of his prowess to administer the seven fiefdoms. He established vassal princes by royal decree. Their names were Harjinpa, Sturharpa, 